Hello, I'm Steve Dakin. I'm an ABRSM examiner, teacher and parent. And thank you to all of you for joining ABRSM's webinar for parents on performance grades. We'll shortly start the webinar, during which time we encourage you to submit any questions you'd like answered into the Q&A box, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. You'll be able to upvote each other's questions and we'll answer as many as we can at the end of the session. To make sure um, we know which are the most popular questions to answer, please make sure you only use the Q&A function for questions, but you can of course discuss the webinar content as we go along in the chat box. Please also focus questions and comments on performance grades so we can really make the most of the time we have together today. We hope you enjoy the webinar and we look forward to answering your questions at the end. Hello and welcome to this webinar. My name is Leanne Farley and I'm an ABRXM examiner as well as a teacher who has prepared several students for these performance grades. And I'm joined today by Steve Dakin, ABRSM examiner and teacher too. We really hope that this webinar will help to shed light on some of the concerns that you might have about helping your child prepare for their performance grades and will hopefully take away some of the mystique surrounding the whole process. There's an excellent how-to hub on the website and it's worth having a look at that. There's an excellent downloadable PDF checklist to help you through the process. And there's also a number of videos about all aspects of the exam, which you may find very helpful. Up until now, the practical grade exams have been set in the diary several weeks in advance. And you may have had to take time off work and take your child out of school to take them to the exam centre. And normally as the day approaches, there's perhaps a little bit of anxiety they're a little bit unsure about the venue. They don't know who the examiner is going to be. There may be some worries about sight reading that they haven't seen before. And for pianists, there's often the worry that they'll be playing on an unfamiliar instrument. Then as a parent, you turn up at the exam center and wave your child off into the exam room and you very much keep your fingers crossed and hope that they're gonna come back with a big smile on their face and fingers crossed they do. And then you await the results. The performance grade experience is going to be rather different to that because as a parent you'll be involved with your child's grade experience all the way through. As the name suggests, it is a performance based grade, so there are no scales, sight reading or oral. And although we very much still believe in teaching those things, those won't be assessed as part of the performance grade. Your child will have to prepare four pieces three of which will come from the syllabus and one of which will be an own choice piece, which may be off the current syllabus, might be from a previous syllabus or might be completely their own choice. And that's something that they can choose in conjunction with their teacher. And so long as it's of the same standard as the grade they're sitting and is of the required length, then that's fine. We want it to be a piece your child will really enjoy. Their exam will be marked from somebody from the examiner panel, from the exact same panel from which they would see an examiner if they were doing the exam face to face. And you can rest assured that the performance grades attract exactly the same qualification as the practical grades would, and indeed attract the same UCAS points in the UK for the higher grades six, seven and eight. And in fact, your child will be able to go between both pathways the practical grade and the performance grade. So they, with the, with the conjunction of them and their teacher, they can make their own ABRSM exam pathway. So once you've decided a performance grade is right for your child, Steve will now explain the booking process. As you might expect, the booking process is all online and can be found at www.abrsm.ac.uk. And we're all quite familiar with doing um, most things online nowadays. The first thing you need to do if you've never entered your child for an exam in the past is to register for an account if you don't already have one. Once you've done that, um, you can make an entry by logging into your account and accessing the portal um, and simply selecting remote exams. From there, you select your location in the world and then select practical exams and then the remote location option. You then get to choose a date range for the exam 
And from there, you'll be able to enter the detail of the instrument, the grade from drop down menus, as well as any additional needs that we might need to be aware of at that point. Then it's a case of um, clicking the show available booking options. Um, and from there, you can select a date by which you would like the video to be uploaded. Um, and sometimes it's useful to just click the more um, options box there in case there are some later dates available. If you've entered your charge for an exam before, you, you'll probably have a, a candidate ID. Um, and at that point, you can enter that into the system and it will bring up um, their name and their date of birth. But if you don't have one, don't worry. Um, you just fill in the next few boxes on the system, which are their name, their date of birth, um, and then you're ready to confirm everything for the entry. Once you've made the booking and submitted it, you'll receive an email notification um, just confirming that. And if it's the first time you've entered for an exam, you'll also receive your candidate ID at that point. And it's worth just keeping that safe for future occasions. The next thing you might want to consider is how to best help your child prepare for their exam. Um, and I know Leanne would like to talk a little bit more about that. So one of the other beauties of the performance grades is the amount of preparation you can do in advance. Once you've decided whereabouts in your house you're going to do the final recording, it might be worth your child doing their practice in that room for a few days beforehand so that they get used to how the acoustic operates in there, particularly if it's not a room that they normally would practice in. It's worth getting the page turns in the music organised and also for your child to practice slickly moving physically between one piece and another and finding the pages that they're going to need. And it might be worthwhile just putting those little page markers on the pages that they're going to need. They need to think about the flow from one piece to another so that there's not too much of a gap between pieces, but equally there's enough of a gap to allow each piece to settle and for the audience to just hear those final moments of that piece before they move on. We don't as an audience want to feel rushed from one piece to another. And then it's also worth them practicing the performance in its entirety so that they really get used to concentrating for that length of time. Because particularly at the higher grades, we are asking them to concentrate for quite a long time. Once all that's in place, it's then worth thinking about doing a mock filming. And Steve's got some thoughts about that. I know many of my pupils are, are more than familiar with them. Um, there being um, an extra recording device in their room, be it a phone or be it a tablet. And I think in society now, we're all too quick to kind of reach for our phone and take a picture or record something that's happening. So you'll probably find that they're not particularly phased by the presence of a recording device. Um, but that said, either way, it's a great idea to do a mock filming just to get them used to the whole process. And by that, I mean doing the entirety of the exam in, in one go if you can. So right from preparing the programme form that they'll need for the actual recording, getting used to showing that to the camera, getting used to announcing their pieces in the order they're going to play them, and then as Leanne said, the discipline of playing all of those four pieces um, back to back. You may wish to consider doing this several times um, just to become more familiar and indeed confident with, with the recording process as a whole. Um, and if things don't quite go to plan, then that's the point of the mock filming and to just take time to relax uh, before we get into do the real filming for the upload. Of course, how you set up the room is quite important too. Um, and I know Leanne would like to give some thoughts on that bit. So once the mock filming has been done and everybody's happy, it might be worth setting a date in the diary to do the exam, much as you would with the practical grade. And ideally that will need to be a, a time when the house is quiet, no background hoovering noises or washing machines spinning or anything like that. Ideally, a time when the house is as quiet as it would be perhaps in a concert sort of a setting. We're very conscious that everyone's in a domestic setting and pianos in a domestic setting, of course, are very often against the wall. And that's fine. It probably means that the camera needs to be off to one side so that your child can liaise with the camera like they would an audience and communicate with the camera, but also that the camera can see the length of the keyboard and the pedals as well. If your child is playing something else, a trumpet, a clarinet, a flute, a cello, they'll need to be facing the camera, 
but also in eye line with their accompanist if they have one, so that they commun can communicate with the accompanist during the performance. Alternatively, if they're using a backing track, as they may well be doing at the moment, they might need to be positioned in such a way that can facilitate them turning the backing track on and off as needed. Finally, we don't give any marks at all in any way for dress, but your child might like to have a think about what to wear to lend the performance that sense of occasion, a bit like they might pick out what to wear for a concert. So perhaps something comfortable, but perhaps a bit smart, just something that they feel good in and that they feel they're going to play their best in. Once all that's in place, Steve's got some thoughts about the technical side of the filming itself. Just before getting into some of the technical things, one of the other things that's quite unusual is that the parent will be present at the exam. So it's just important thinking about where you might stand or any other responsible adult that might be part of the process. So just to really clarify, there's no need to stand in the shot. The best place really is to stand behind the camera just to make sure everything's set up and is running smoothly. Um, and if nothing else, it's a great position to be able to offer the occasional reassuring smile as, as the um, exam progresses. But thinking about making the filming go smoothly, just some kind of top tips really to make sure both the mock filming and the actual filming um, is as successful as it possibly can be. One of the things to think about is the resolution of the camera. Many cameras have a default setting. It's just important for the upload process later that the resolution is set to 720p. And this might mean making a few changes to your device, but it's relatively normally straightforward to do. Take a quick test maybe at the beginning of the filming, just to make sure the sound's working properly um, and everything's as it should be. Making sure the device has got enough battery and, a, and enough storage as well is quite important. Um, and making sure those notifications that might ping up and interrupt the flow um, don't get in the way of the recording. Having your program form ready and completed and ready to show to the camera is also important and make sure you've practiced announcing the pieces in the order. And for your own choice piece, it's worth having um, the copy ready to show to the camera um, uh, just for a few seconds so the examiner can see um, a little bit more about that piece of music. When required, have the identification document ready, the photo ID or whatever it may be that you need. Um, and there's some information on the website about the acceptable forms for this ID. There's lots of other information on the website. The How To Hub that we've referred to um, previously has plenty of step-by-step -step guides, which I'm sure you'll find helpful. Above all, most importantly, try and stay calm. Do the best you can. We want to um, hear you perform the best you possibly can. But if things don't quite go to plan, um, I know Leanne's had some thoughts about what to do here. So you've done the recording and hopefully your child is really happy with it. They've got a big smile on their face and a great sense of achievement that their performance grade is in the can, so to speak. But if it hasn't quite gone according to plan, the beauty of course with the performance grades is that you've got plenty of time to do it again before the upload date. It's worth having a chat with your child before the recording about the fact that very often professional musicians make mistakes, that's the nature of it, and that even if they make a little slip, one of the things that the examiner is looking for, one of the performance skills, if you like, is that they're able to recover from those slips and carry on regardless, because that would obviously be important in a live concert situation. So if they do make a slip early on in their recording, encourage them to keep going to get an entire recording done. And then after that, can have a think about whether they'd like to do it again. By all means, do it again the same day. But if they're slight, starting to get a little bit upset, a little bit anxious, it might be worth letting the dust settle on it and come back to it a couple of days later. Once you've got several recordings done, it might then be worth liaising with your child's teacher to decide which one you think is best. And then when you're ready to upload, Steve's got some thoughts about the technical side of that process. Once you've got your final video and it's ready to upload, it's time to go back to the, the ABRSM website to do that uploading. First, double check it's in one of the accepted formats and the file size doesn't exceed the maximum limit. Um, if so, you'll just need to compress the file and there's lots of um, uh, applications available to help you with this. So going back to that website, you log into your portal 
and you'll see in your um, my booking section the option to just submit your recording so click on that and then you'll find that option is there on the left hand side then just tick the checkbox uh, uh, to agree to the various statements um, and you'll just need to list the people that were present and their role in the exam as well bearing in mind if your child is over 18 um, they those boxes won't necessarily be there clicking upload recording um, will take you to the screen where you can upload the video itself and then you just upload that file in the same way that you might um, attach something to an email so you find it on your computer and you select it you'll see a progress bar appear at this point and that just tells you uh, how close you are to having that video finally uploaded to the system and it's just really important you don't navigate away from the screen at that point we'd hate for the, the video not to quite finish uploading after all your hard work um, and at that point it should all be done once the confirmation comes through it's a case of just sitting back relaxing for a job well done um, and waiting for that video to arrive with the examiner it will then of course be mocked in the usual way um, and Leanne I know wants to talk a little bit more about the mocking the exam is marked out of 150 with each piece being awarded 30 marks and those 30 marks um, that those pieces are marked in exactly the same way as the practical grade pieces and the criteria for that is well known to teachers but is also available on the website. What's different with the performance grade is the fact that the final 30 marks are made up for the performance as a whole. There's an excellent video on YouTube by the Deputy Chief Examiner Mervyn Cousins who explains quite a lot more about how these 30 marks are reached. That criteria box is divided into three sections, communication, interpretation and delivery. Communication, how well they communicated to the audience as a whole, how committed were they to their performance as a whole. The interpretation deals with how well your child has understood and interpreted the individual styles of the pieces that they've played. And finally, the delivery is all to do with how technically competent they were on their instrument so how well they managed the fingering in the piano how well perhaps they managed the breathing if it was a brass or a woodwind instrument the exam is marked within a couple of days of the submission date it gets emailed out to an examiner again from the highly trained panel of examiners that your child would see if they were in a face-to-face -face situation the examiner will mark the exam within a couple of days and once the results are processed you will receive an email letting you know that your child's results are available to view through the portal. You will then be able to access a PDF with your child's marks and comments on, and all being well they've passed, and you'll receive a certificate in the post in due course. Well, we hope you found the information we've given you helpful. Um, I know now um, we're gonna go into a time of some question and answers. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much for all the questions that have been coming in during the webinar. And indeed, we had some in advance of the webinar as well. So we're going to answer those advanced questions first and then follow on with the ones that have been coming in during the session. So the first question was, does the time limit for the exam include the time it takes your child to show their programme form and to announce their pieces? And the answer to that is no, it doesn't. The timing of the exam starts effectively from the first moment, the first note of the first piece, if you like, through till the last note of the last piece. Although the couple of seconds that your child might take at the beginning of the first piece, kind of settling down and setting the scene, plus the few seconds they might take on the end of the final piece, just to let that final piece settle, they're kind of taken into consideration as well as part of the performance as a whole. But in terms of the programme form and the announcement of the pieces, no, that is not taken into account as part of the time limit of the exam. Thanks, Leanne. The next question we had was um, the syllabus states the song selection should allow for a coherent and convincing performance event. Are the examiners looking for similar or contrasting songs? Uh, well, in short, there isn't a requirement as such for pieces to be similar or contrasting. 
Um, as examiners, of course, we'll be assessing the performance as a whole. And this includes some differentiation between the pieces, but each piece within itself will demonstrate that in its character and through the performance of that piece. So in essence, three songs um, or pieces from the syllabus and one own choice, um, which could also be from the syllabus, uh, would be absolutely fine. Thanks, Steve. Um, we had a question about the position of the camera for pianists. Do we need to have the keyboard and the child's feet and back in the shot? Um, the answer is yes, please, ideally. Um, the reason we like to see the feet is not because we're going to comment on the pedal technique at all, because that's a teaching point for the teacher to deal with. Um, but it is helpful when we're examining pieces to know whether the pedal was used, because obviously it can have an effect on the clarity of the tone. And that is something that we might want to be able to talk about on the mark form. So yes, please, if at all possible, we do need to see the length of the keyboard and the pedals, please. Thanks, Leanne. The next question um, I've heard from a couple of music teachers that the performance grades seem to be marked more harshly than the equivalent regular practical exams. Please, could you comment? Um, well, in short, um, the statistics we have so far from over 50,000 performance um, grades show us that the total marks, and indeed, in many cases, the individual piece marks, um, are very much in line between the practical and the performance grade. So there's a, a real parity there. Um, so in essence, um, they're not being mocked more harshly, no. Thanks, Steve. The next question was, will students be penalised if the choice or the order of the four pieces does not fit into a musical story? So we're not marking a musical story as such because obviously all the pieces that are on the syllabus are there to be performed and to be chosen and they don't have to be chosen with any form of story or anything particular in mind but in terms of the order in which your child plays those pieces then yes that is something to be considered rather like they would if they were doing a concert um, if you went to see a concert you would probably want to be left on a high you would probably want your performer to leave you with perhaps a faster sort of upbeat kind of a piece perhaps wouldn't want to finish the concert on a kind of minor slow sad kind of a piece so it is worth thinking about the mood of the individual pieces within your child's program and thinking about how that's going to ebb and flow as it goes through and perhaps try and leave the examiner on a high um, leave them with a piece that they really enjoy and perhaps something you know in a major key one of the faster happier sort of character type pieces. Um, so that comes in as part of the performance as a whole mark, that yes, the pacing and the sequencing of the pieces is being considered, but in terms of do they tell a story, not really so much. Thank you. Um, the next question, during these COVID times, if students are using a backing track as the piano accompaniment, are they supposed to turn on the track themselves on the computer, for example, or can a parent do this for them? And if so, can the parent be visible on the recording or does he or she have to be set up, set up the computer, sorry, in such a position that they will not be seen on the screen? Um, this can be done either by you or child or by yourself. If it's not possible uh, for you to not be in screen due to the setup, um, then stay off screen for as long as you can, but it's perfectly okay for you to pop into shot and do what you need with the backing track. Um, but it's just important to retreat out of shot again whilst the performance takes place so both your child can concentrate on that element of performance um, and the examiner can also fully focus on the performance that's being delivered at the time. Thanks Steve. The next question we had was when we will we know about the performance grade dates beyond April and the answer to that is hopefully very soon please keep an eye on the website um, but we are hoping to be able to release those dates very soon. Thank you. Um, the next question if a student ordinarily gets extra time in an exam because of a physical disability does this also apply in performance grades? Um, really, the best advice here is to, to look online. Um, they wouldn't get um, additional time for the performance of the four pieces, uh, but rest breaks, for example, um, for up to five minutes can be taken during the performance. So this could be as one long rest or several shorter breaks 
Um, the best thing to do is to check out the access arrangements um, on, on the ABRSM website. And you can also email the access coordinator directly um, if you're at all unsure or would like some further guidelines on that. Thanks. The next question was, will this form of exam be available after lockdown ends? And the answer is yes. This is a new and permanent ABRSM offer. It's been in the pipeline for quite a long time and it's been the intention to add additional qualifications and other offers for quite a while. But the occurrence of the pandemic kind of sped up the offer and also made sure that this is now a remote offer and that we are now um, able to examine this remotely. So yes, it is a permanent offer. It is there to sit alongside the practical grades, not in any way to replace the practical grades, as we said in the webinar. It's there um, as an extra choice. It may suit some children more than others. And it may be that some children will go between practical and performance grades as their exam journey progresses. Um, but yes, it is a permanent offer to sit alongside the exams that we already have in place. Thanks, Leanne. Um, the last question from the um, ones that were submitted in advance, um, if all four pieces are from the relevant um, ABRSM syllabus, um, does the candidate still need to show the fourth or own choice piece briefly to the camera, or is it okay and sufficient that the list and number for the fourth piece are on the programme form? Um, if it is from um, a current syllabus, then there is no need to show the, the sheet music. Um, it is just important to point out that um, that programme form is as completed as fully as you see possibly can with um, the list number, the syllabus details, the composer and the title. And just taking um, five, 10 seconds at the beginning of the exam to make sure that's displayed really clearly um, to the camera so the examiner can read that and therefore has the um, correct information to begin the exam. Thanks. The next question was about breaks how many breaks can be taken during the exam and how long? And can parents speak to the candidate during the breaks? So the best thing again is to have a look at the website because the breaks advice varies between instruments. So the best thing to do is, I can't really give a comprehensive answer on that here and now, the best thing is to consult the website to see what breaks your child might be able to take during their performance. With regards to is it worth speaking to your child or is it a good idea to speak to your child during the breaks? Probably not. Um, probably best for them to use those breaks to maintain their concentration and maintain the kind of zone that they're in. Um, and then when they're ready, they can then proceed on to the next piece. Thanks, Leanne. Um, the next question, will a candidate's grade be compromised if the video is recorded in their home and it is not so good acoustically? This is a really good question. And I think it's important to point out that as examiners, we have considerable skill to and experience, in fact, to draw on recognizing which aspects of the performance grades um, submissions are attributable to the quality of the recording, as opposed to the candidate's own control of their instrument and the tone, the dynamics, and the other kind of areas of performance. With practical um, grades, we encounter a wide range of different sizes and quality of instruments, exam room acoustics and other, other factors such as outside noise and all sorts of um, different interruptions. Um, and, and the same applies really when assessing performance grades. We're required to distinguish between what is intrinsic to the quality of the performance um, as opposed to what is to do with the quality of the recording. Um, so the quality of the recording device really has no bearing on the, on the marks awarded. Thanks, Steve. And for our final question, somebody asked, if we submit early, will it be marked early? So if you upload your piece early, if you're happy with your recording and you upload it before the upload date, will it be marked early or will we have to wait until after the submission date? And the answer is it won't be marked early because the examiner's time and the days that the examiners are available is very much tied in with how much time there is available for examining on that particular day. So the exams, the, the dates and the examiner time are kind of tied in in parallel with each other. Um, so no, if you do happen to upload, that's fine. You've done it, it's in the can and it's done and you can you know, not worry about it anymore, but it won't actually be marked early. Um, but once your exam has been marked, you will receive an email in your inbox to say that your results are available to view on the portal. 
So thank you very, very much for joining us today, for giving up your time. And thank you very much for your interest in the ABRSM performance exams. We very much hope that your child will choose to take one and that you will all enjoy the whole process of preparation and preparing them, recording them. And we as examiners very much look forward to hearing them. This webinar will be available for you to view afterwards along with questions that we haven't unfortunately had time to answer. So please keep an eye on the inbox for that. And once again, thank you very much for joining us. And we wish you and particularly your child all the very best of luck with their performance grade. Thank you very much. Thank you.